All in favor? Aye. 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 At 707. Members present, I am here. The Hensley is here. The Lana Stanchel is here. Dr. Carol Robinson is here. Jim Bender is here. Dwayne is absent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have. Is it up? <laughs> Members of the public may address the board on any item within the jurisdiction of the board uh, by submitting a presentation of request to the secretary. Members of the public are strongly urged not to mention personnel by name uh, and are reminded that uh, they are not immune from legal action if personnel are named. The board is limited, each speaker to three minutes and a total of 20 minutes. And uh, Kimberly Smith. All right. I actually have something for all of you. It's just a copy. Of, um, I am a fourth grade teacher at West Park Elementary. Um, I am also the RIF coordinator, and RIF is uh, um, reading is fundamental. Um, it is where our TK through third grade um, students get a book. It used to be a free program, but now we have to pay $3 per child. We have been a part of this program for over 10 years, and we, I went on Monday to pick up books and go to the orientation. And we have, were celebrated by, in their little program, and then we also got a badge, saying that uh, celebrating 10 years of program participation from 2009-2019. We've actually been a part of the RIF program for longer than that, but I wanted to thank the board for supporting the program and then also seeing that we were recognized as Roseman Elementary and what smart elementary school are on this paper that was in the fund. So I want to give you guys a copy of it and then say thank you. So thank you. <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> the kids know it as a positive thing because they enjoy getting the book. So, thank you. Next is Charlie Wallace. Excuse me, Charles Wallace. <laughs> I go by many names. Good, e good evening, Superintendent Gaines and board members. Thank you so much for this opportunity uh, and honor of serving our students. It's a great privilege. And I uh, also want to thank uh, Larry Tanksley and also uh, Master Sergeant Taylor for the hard work they did establishing ROTC that laid the groundwork for uh, leadership programs. And we hit the ground running, Cadet Corps did, and we uh, already helped, or we did a 9-11 ceremony for uh, Lance Corporal Joseph Craddy, a fallen Marine who graduated from Rare Earth High School. Uh, we've helped with community service at Willow Springs Raceway at Armed Forces Day. And also last week we helped with games at the West Park Fall Festival. Uh, tomorrow I'm taking a group of leaders to UCLA to learn about scholarship opportunities. This uh, program was inspired by a young man named Kareem Hyderelli. Kareem was put in Cadet Corps as a 7th grader. He tried to get out, uh, but he attended his first bivouac and was all in. Today, Kareem is a freshman at UCLA on a full ROTC scholarship. This is his picture that I saw on Facebook. That's how I learned about Cadet Corps. <coughs> and I hope to see him tomorrow. Uh, we are developing leaders for today. 
Every day we see cadets stepping up to lead, many who had no confidence when we started. Um, one of those is Wesley, who uh, talked about his struggle with some uh, social anxiety, different issues, <coughs> and last week he was one of the best leaders at the West Park Fall Festival. Uh, but the biggest impact is when cadets get to see the big picture and when they get to see other schools and cadets working and growing as leaders. And that's what happens at Extreme Team Challenge and the bivouac that's coming up soon. Uh, these events only happen once or twice a year, but the impact is long past their duration. Uh, we have learned that Cadet Corps does pay for some van rentals and uh, other transportation, and we're still getting all the answers. but. We just want to ask the district uh, for support as much as possible. Uh, Sergeant Munoz, uh, Tropico's uh, commandant and leader, uh, has already over 65 cadets that want to go to uh, bivouac. I have 15 signed up between yesterday and today, and I'm sure there will be more. Uh, we would love to take a large group uh, if possible. And our motto for Cadet Corps is Essayons. It's a French word which means let us try. So thank you for much. Uh, thank you so much for trusting us with uh, these great students, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing them do great things. Thank you. Thank you. How many students are signed up at the high school? Four. For the cadet program. Uh, we have 117 currently. Yeah, tropical. 109. 109. As of today, yes. Okay, student board members, Glenn is not here, so we don't get his report. Uh, Isabel. I first would like to, <coughs> to thank the board and faculty for making our, safe, our safety at school at Tropco number one priority last week. I was one of the students present at school the following day. I felt completely safe at school as always. This week at Tropco, we had kindness week. I believe it was a success. Monday, we passed out name tags and had students eat lunch with someone someone they didn't know. Tuesday, we wore shirts that interest us and found others with the same interests. We also enjoyed a prep rally. It was a great way to end first quarter. Wednesday, we did random acts of kindness. Next week, we will be having Red Ribbon Week where we will look at things that currently affects the students. Monday, spinal bifida. Tuesday, autism. Wednesday, cancer. Tuesday, Thursday, epilepsy. And Friday, bullying. In honor of this week, we will be giving the whole student body the water bottles and earbuds. We have also given the board members. ASB has started to sell boo board member boo grams for a dollar each. Camp Keep has a dance on November 1st and yearbook is planning a dance for November for homecoming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, communication. Uh, welcome everybody and thank you for coming and I just want to stress about uh, the uh, parent teacher conferences tomorrow. Hope they go well and I hope that we have big participations and that every parent will make it to their appointment. Thank you. Doctor? Um, well, the, the last board meeting I told you, I kind of apologized that I was not going to be available because my 97-year-old mother was ill and she did get put in the hospital, but she's home and recuperating and doing well, and so I'm not at a funeral now. <laughs> um, but there were many things going on at your schools that I would have really liked to have been at. I was really encouraged by your, your positive days, you know, eating lunch with, you know, all those things that you just said. I was encouraged by that. And, uh, I think that those are the kinds of things that will change the atmospheres in our schools. And so uh, I'm sorry that I haven't been available, but uh, uh, 
hopefully I'll be more available now. <laughs> so. I thank everybody for showing up tonight. Um, I thank Mr. Adam for the excellent job he did the other day, uh, getting everything organized and, and putting safety first. Um, that's one thing that we don't take lightly. Safety is very important. Uh, I want to thank all the other people that showed up to help support that and, and uh, made that go as smooth as possible in uh, circumstances we, that we had. And it was really nice to uh, try to joke around with some of the kids in the, in the line. and We had a lot of fun just trying to get them some, in there as quickly as we can. So thank everybody for their support. I can get program. I'm excited about that. Um, when we first heard about it, it was a blessing that came. Um, I'm looking forward for lots of lots of good results from that. Um, we have students out there in Tropico that I believe that they can really touch and change lives. And um, I believe you have the board support and we'll probably do everything we can to make sure that that program succeeds and you guys get what you need. I'd like to uh, thank everybody for attending as well. Uh, uh, Mr. Wallace, Mr. Munoz, nothing more uh, exciting and you know, big reading and building up and seeing where these kids go with their leadership. It's pretty amazing. I got a small brain, but you can still pick it. So I still know the play tricks in the trade. Uh, is Isabella and Matt kind of sweet? Wow. Pretty cool. Great seeing people do things like that out there. Uh, Ms. Schmidt, thanks for bringing good news with the riff. Yeah, right. It's, it's good riff. And the kid, I don't know if I, the kids get three books a, a year. So we have assemblies throughout the year, three times a year. Um, and they get a, bo a book. We pay $3. The books are definitely worth more than the $3 that we pay for them. So. Okay. And uh, I'd also <laughs> like to thank uh, being new to the board, the communication wise with administrators, union, uh, from the front office uh, is pretty amazing. Uh, always kept in the loop. Uh, finding out about West Park clothes and all that cool stuff. You get to see uh, to see the nuts and bolts of it that you don't get to see from that side. So it's pretty cool to see all the communication that goes down. And I want to thank you for that and keeping everybody in the loop. Thank you. Uh, thank you everybody for showing up and being a great audience. Uh, the books that the kids get, uh, they get to keep them? They're, they're theirs to keep forever. Okay. They're their own books. They get they pick it out and they take it. They get a bookmark and a book plate, and so the book plate goes inside their book uh, like it's, it's a sticker. Yeah. And then um, they put it on there and they. Um, I usually write uh, the name of the student on there, and it's their book. They take it home. It's theirs to keep. They pick it out. It's it's a good program. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful thing that you guys are doing with that because. I had a real problem learning to read. And once I really got going on reading, uh, I now have a full library at my house. And I love holding a book. I do own a nook and it's got tons of paper, but it's not the same. <laughs> I prefer to grab a good old paperback. Uh, and uh, I remember. As a kid, if somebody gave me a book, it's like, do you not like me? <laughs> it's because they really loved you, that's why they gave you the book. And, and <laughs> that's exactly what it was. And I didn't realize it until later in life. And uh, when I uh, get stuff for my grandchildren, I get a book. <laughs> and they probably think the same thing. But they do, they, they love to sit with you and read. And I mean, the little guys can read some of these books because you sit with them and read them. So I think that's just amazing. Uh, Charlie and uh, Mr. Munoz. Mr. Munoz, uh, thank you uh, for taking the uh, cadet program over and running with it. Because I think uh, that and ROTC that we used to have uh, is one of the best things for some of the kids that are at risk. Uh, and 95% of those kids will turn around. Uh, so, thank you.
And with that, we will continue on. Uh, RTA is not here today. CSEA. Good evening, board. Mr. Gaines, uh, Mr. Hargis, Ms. Sally, Mr. Barton. Uh, our e-board met with Mrs. Gaines uh, yesterday. It was our third such meeting. Uh, we meet about once a month. It's really nice. Um, our union can speak to her about issues that we have, concerns, and it's a good way to have communication. She can tell us where you guys are coming from. We can tell her where we're coming from. And it's, it's a good way to just kind of, you know, be on the same team and, and be here for the students as we all are. Uh, we look forward to all of our future meetings. They always seem to go well. We appreciate it. Um, our union has voted in approval of our proposal for our upcoming contract negotiations. Um, we hope that it comes to the board soon and we can start negotiations with the district when we start getting the um, I reached out to Mr. Coleman and RTA recently to try to meet and kind of <coughs> just get together and, and share some thoughts with each other just about how to uh, maintain cohesive with RTA and CSCA as well as with the board and with the district. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Coleman's a busy guy, so hopefully we'll meet soon with the board to that as well. Um, it's a really cool thing that you guys did at Tropico kind this week. My son was really excited about it. Um, so good job on that, guys. Um, that's all we got. We look forward to meeting with you guys soon. Thank you. So, and I say this, and I do not have a lot of information about it, but I, I will have more information next week. Uh, I was informed yesterday that the Governor's K program, uh, Southern Kern Unified School District, is a recipient of $5.025 million dollars for some new kindergarten classrooms. So uh, we'll know more about it next week. They're coming to see us. But I thought that that was great news and how exciting for for the district um, to be able to, to uh, build those additional rooms. Um, it, Mark, thank you for mentioning. It's always a treat to be able to meet with CSEA. 
I think that um, I've learned a, a lot about the individual e-board members, and this can only help us when we sit down across that table, which can sometimes be a little intimidating, and uh, and uh, negotiate this year. I look forward to to that as well. So thank you, and thank your board for that. I want to say kudos to all the principals and the assistant principals because um, we've been visiting their sites and I know that uh, they're working really hard on making sure the sites are clean, making sure that instruction is going on in the classrooms and uh, so it's really been a treat for the cabinet to go out and visit the different uh, schools. This Monday we're at West Park. We're excited to visit West Park. And I also want to say to Mrs. Sacconini and Mrs. Mr. Riley that I look forward to the meet and greet this Sunday and any of our district employees who want to join us at um, Roseman High School at 3 o'clock in the library I believe just to get to meet the WASP visiting team. Um, when they initially come, it can be very intimidating. I've been nervous a couple times in my career. Um, so it's a great way just to get to meet them and have some hors d'oeuvres and let them know all the great things that we have to offer in Southern Kern Unified School District. So if you have nothing else to do Sunday at 3, please, <laughs> please be there. Uh, and I also want to say that our November 6th board meeting will be at West Park. So um, not here, we will be at West Park on November 6th. So parent conferences tomorrow, my goal is to get out and, and drop by, even though I'm, I'm not a parent there, but I just want to, you know, hopefully uh, uh, be there to support the teachers as they uh, uh, hopefully have many great things to tell the parents about their, their students so far. So that's pretty much it. Uh, consent items A through H. Does anybody have any questions about any of the uh, items from today? No. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion. A motion to approve consent items A through H. Motion to approve consent items. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The Board of Trustees will consider an appointment of one more uh, labor negotiator to represent the board in collective bargaining negotiations uh, with the California Teachers Association and the California School Employees Association uh, who respect, uh, represent classified certificated employees rep uh, representatives. The board will uh, identify in open session any representative designee. Uh, does anybody have any suggestions? Uh, I'd like to see the CBO, uh, Jonathan, uh, represent us. Is that okay? I second third very much. <laughs> uh, I will make a motion to have Jonathan, our CBO, to uh, represent us as the second. And Mr. Bender seconded that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Curriculum. Uh, California School Dashboard Local Indicators and Student Progress. Mr. Webster. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Dan Webster. I'm going to uh, talk about the California School Dashboard Local Indicators. Okay. So first, the California School Dashboard. Uh, the dashboard is an online tool designed to help communities across the state access important information about K-12 schools and districts. So 
So the local indicators are for local control funding formula priorities where data is not collected at the state level. A district will measure and report its progress through the dashboard based on locally collected data. Okay, so let's look at let's look at the dashboard and look at the difference between um, the state collected data and the local indicators. Sorry, I didn't rehearse this part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the state collects the following information: um, information about uh, we, we, the state measures chronic absenteeism, suspension rate. English learner progress, which um, because of the transition to the CELT um, was not reported last year, uh, the two, not last year, but the previous year. All this data is from 2017-2018. The data from last year, 2018-2019, um, should be published to the dashboard, I believe, in early December. Um, so English learner progress will be um, published um, in the 2019 dashboard. Um, graduation rate college and career indicators, college and career readiness, um, and then this is from uh, our CAST um, results for ELA and math. Um, so all that data is, is collected by the state. Um, the following data is our uh, local uh, performance indicator data that we collect ourselves, that's what I'm gonna be showing you tonight, um, and, and we publish. Okay, so we've got basics, which is um, our teachers, our instructional materials, and our facilities. Um, we've got implementation of academic standards, parent and family engagement, local climate survey, and access to a broad course of study. So that's what I'm going to be talking to you uh, about tonight, um, is our uh, performance in those areas, and we'll also talk about how we collected the information for those areas. So the dashboard identifies the district's areas of strength and areas of need, uh, the local performance indicators provide the district with additional data to inform decision making and planning, um, and that all informs the LCAP, which is the district's educational plan with the goal being uh, to improve student outcomes. Okay, we, we talked about, um, we talked about um, the, the five priorities for the local indicators, priority one being uh, the basics, priority two being implementation of academic standards, Priority three, uh, parent and family engagement. Um, priority six is uh, the local climate survey, and priority seven is access to a broad course of study. Okay, so let's get into uh, priority one, being uh, basics. <coughs> First, the number of missed assignments. Uh, okay, this data comes from the, uh, the, the, the this first category here comes from the HR department. Um, calculating teacher missed assignments, which is uh, a new requirement. Um, this, this information um, is an estimate. It's, it's actually really, um, we have to like look at every section and see where the English learners are and make sure there's a, a qualified teacher um, in those sections. So it's, a, it's actually a very time consuming process uh, to calculate this. It's not due um, to CalPADS until the spring. So the, uh, the, the, these first two um, categories are estimates. Uh, so the number of missed assignments of teachers in English, lear of English learners is two. Total teacher missed assignments is two and the number of vacant teacher positions as of today is zero. Okay, uh, the next two categories, these come from our Williams visits. Uh, the number of students without access to their own copies of standards aligned instructional materials for use at school and at home is zero. Number of identified instances where facilities do not meet the good repair standard, including deficiencies and extreme deficiencies, is zero. Okay, moving on to priority two. Uh, this is the implementation of state academic standards. So uh, the dashboard uh, provides the district with a self-reflection tool. Uh, the, at a cabinet meeting, we went through the self-reflection tool, um, and the cabinet uh, uh, gave um, a, a numerical value um, to each category. Okay, so here's the rating scale that's used. It's going to be used for this question and a number of other questions. Um, okay, so it, it's a five-point scale from lowest to highest, number one being exploration and research phase, number two, beginning development, three, initial implementation, four, full implementation, and five, full implementation and sustainability. So for English language arts, uh, professional learning is full implementation. 
instructional materials is full implementation and sustainability, and supporting staff is initial implementation. For English language development, professional learning is a three, instructional materials a five, supporting staff a three. Math, professional learning four, instructional materials five, supporting staff three. Uh, science, the new science standards, the next generation science standards, professional learning is three, instructional materials three, supporting staff two. History, social science, professional learning three, instructional materials three, supporting staff two. And while I'm talking, if anybody has any questions, just raise your hand. Can I, can I ask maybe yes. a stupid question? I'm not that smart, yes. but supporting staff, I mean, how is all the numbers higher that everything's going good when we don't have this supporting staff to support it? Um, supporting staff is um, the administration's ability to help the staff identify areas of need and to um, fix whatever issues there are. And it, it, it looks at are there structures in place um, to help the staff to determine um, where the gaps are um, in their um, instruction and fill those gaps. So we, we felt that um, for um, language arts, um, ELD, and math, we had um, structures in place through the professional learning community. Um, in science and, his and history, um, they're not being fully addressed. Yes? Okay, I had a question. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask or not. But on the previous slide, you said there were two teachers that weren't... Oh, oh, Mr. Sign. Yes. Is that meaning that they were, um, that they're, like, that they don't have their ELD or they're just in a yeah. different an assignment that they're not, their credential isn't in? Okay, so there, there are two total teachers and both of them are teachers of English learners. And this is, um, th this is per the HR department. So I, 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 I you can't answer that question. Um, but so it, my interpretation is that there are two teachers who aren't cert certified to teach ELD. They don't have their class. So they may not have class. Class. Okay, I, that's, so. that's what I kind of thought, but I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Still in priority two. Um, the next uh, category is other adopted academic <coughs> standards. Same rating scale. We're rating uh, the oh, districts. I'm sorry, Dan, can you go back a slide? Yes. So, who, who made the decision whether staff was supporting, if I'm understanding, supporting staff rate? Who, was that, that was, that was um, made by the cabinet? Yes, that was at a cabinet meeting. Do, do the administrators feel that way? I mean, so you guys they, are where the rubber meets the road, right? You guys know whether... So he, he um, Jim, your question was, for supporting staff, why were their numbers high? But the numbers for the supporting staff are actually lower yeah. than the other one. Then so that that's... doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I mean, so I'm, that that is, it's, and you were saying it, what if we don't have the supporting staff that we may right. have had like two years ago, which is accurate. Um, but we do have quite a few, especially um, support at the elementary level, uh, we have some classroom care educators and we have lots of different supporting staff throughout the school sites. And the things that they're helping us with, and so th the three itself just means initial implementation, which means we're starting to implement that and getting it going in the right direction. So those actually are pretty accurate um, at this moment. So is, is supporting staff the supporting staff Employees or are no, those staff no. being supported, supported to yeah. do this? Okay. Oh, yeah. Science oh. Is, that's where I was. Yes, yeah, they're, they're being do, supported. So, that's why that's a lower. so, uh, so it's lower. Lower. so those are lower because we are not quite there yet. We're working towards that. We're getting in that direction. If you administrators feel that way, if you if you want, we're going in the right direction. We're starting to work on those things. We just haven't gotten there quite yet. Um, the term supporting staff is, is a paraphrase um, for a longer description. Um, at the end of the presentation, when I have a moment, um, I can look up what the exact verbiage is. I think that would be, that would be helpful. I, th I think when we see what the exact verbiage is for supporting staff, I think it'll, be, um, it'll clear up the... Um, well, because that could be two different things. Like the 
Well, I think because it says supporting staff, you're going to think it's a paraeducator. Right. No. Because no. right. that's, that's what we need or something like um, that. It, it's, um, I believe um, it, it's referring to um, the districts having structures in place to support staff in terms of um, in terms of improving like instructional practice in these areas, and I'll um, and I'll, I'll get you the exact footage. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other adopted academic standards. Okay. Rate the district's progress implementing each of the following academic standards adopted by the State Board of Education for all students. Um, career and technical education, uh, four. Health education, four. Physical education, four. Visual and performing arts, three. World language, four. Yes. Um, on that slide. Um, health education, what's that based upon? Well, that we have um, health educate that we're. It's, it's not it's happening in high school. Do you have it at Tropical? That's been waived from the board. <coughs> health was waived, what is it, 2000 and something? Or about three years ago? It was waived. We don't really have it. Okay. So we should change health education? Yeah, yeah, because right now it's been waived till I think, is it 2022 or something? I think it's been waived. We don't have to do yes. it at the district, at the high school level. Okay. Yeah. yeah just the basics are covered in. You know, Biology. They, yeah. They do, they do cover it through the elementary curriculum, but it's like wash your hands and, you know, um, eat the right kinds of foods and those kinds of things in elementary school. I think we just weighed the graduation requirement for two years. It, yeah. I mean, we do offer for the kids because of the state law, we do have the positive prevention with sex education and things like that. We do have that, so that could perhaps be that included is part in of the, the positive prevention, part of the science. Yes. Part of the science. Yes. But I, I don't understand how physical education can get a four when we do not have PE teachers at our elementary schools. Because the teachers are qualified to teach PE. This is also not this. The teachers are teachers. No, this is this. It's not that we don't have them. Teachers are teachers. The scores are the same. This, I'm sorry? The scores are the same. Who says that the career technical education is a form? This is done at a cabinet meeting? So it's a cabinet meeting and students? For the, yeah, for priority two. And uh, Dan, the health education, I believe at the time of our discussion, we discussed that at Tropico, we, ha we offer help through, uh, and also at the high school, and through our family life uh, education right. yeah. for our seventh and I believe our 10th grade students. And so that is a state mandate that we are meeting. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we thought that um, that's the reason we gave it a four. We are implementing that. And it's a part of the health program. Mr. Wallace, can you give me credit? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We, uh, that, uh, yeah, that core has a entire section on health and well. well, that's good and to know, too. Fitness. And marching band also does credit as well. Okay. Okay. The last section for priority two is support for teachers and administrators. Rate the LEA's progress implementing each of the following academic standards adopted by the State Board of Education for all students. Um, support for teachers and administrators. Identifying the professional learning needs of groups of teachers or staff as a whole. Three, identifying the professional learning needs of individual teachers. Three, providing support for teachers on the standards they have not yet mastered. Three. Okay. Next. 
next priority is priority three, parent engagement. And this looks at how the district seeks input from parents or guardians in school and district decision making, and how the district promotes parental participation in programs. So for, for priority three, uh, we sent out a parent engagement survey to all faculty, staff, families, and high school students. There were 220 completed surveys, including 185 parents or guardians, 37 teachers, and 16 staff members. Uh, the survey was sent out in English and Spanish. There were 13 respondents to the Spanish survey. The cabinet met to analyze the survey results and to use the survey results as a basis for the plan to improve family engagement. Um, the survey consisted of uh, three sections. The first section was on building relationships. In terms of building relationships, the following strengths were identified from the survey results. Teachers offer methods, and in quotes, uh, so this is somebody's response to the survey. Teachers offer methods of communication, including apps that provide information and means for private conversations to stay up to date on things. The district provides mail notices with information. The school principal makes frequent telephone and email contact regarding important events and information. New quote, the new Facebook page is very helpful. I also like the admins have been responding to questions asked on social media. The following focus areas for improvement were identified for building relationships. The application to volunteer at the school site has to be resubmitted each year, and it is never convenient to find a time when the district is open, for instance, weekends, lunchtime, evenings, etc., and you can't fill it out online. New quote, require staff and administration to reply to parent communication within 24 hours. Okay, the second section for priority three pertains to building partnerships for student outcomes. In the survey, parents identified having additional meeting opportunities as a focus area for improvement. In quotes, in addition to back to school night, there should be open house later in the year. Also, now there is only one opportunity to conference with parents, and there should be at least two. An additional conference should be added at the end of the third quarter. Okay, and this is a description of programs the district um, has put in place uh, to help build partnerships for student outcomes. The district is providing professional learning and support to teachers and principals to improve a school's capacity to partner with families. This is done through Capturing Kids Hearts training, which includes developing relationships with families. About 100 faculty and staff members have been trained in Capturing Kids Hearts. SKUSD implemented the Attention to Attendance program. Last year, the district conducted 1,358 attendance conferences and sent out 6,580 attendance letters. Uh, this led to a 1.4% decrease in the district's chronic absence rate and an increase in the district's attendance percentage of 0.5% from the previous school year. Okay, the third category for priority three is seeking input for decision making. Survey respondents identify the following strengths. The district has done a great job this year, this year of emailing and getting information out that tells parents how they can participate. Parents were able to contribute to the LCAP. Survey respondents identified the following focus areas for improvement. More publicity around meetings where parents can participate and be able to share their ideas and input on current policies and ideas being considered. So many of our families speak Spanish only. We do not effectively communicate or reach out to those families. Okay, priority six is school climate. So for school climate, um, the information presented um, comes from the uh, California Healthy Kids Survey administered last year. During the 2018-2019 school year, SKUSD administered the, the California Healthy Kids Survey to students in grades seven, nine, and 11. The sample size was, um, for seventh grade, there were 230 respondents. For ninth grade, there were 119 respondents. And for 11th grade, there were 94 respondents. 
Okay. Within the survey, there was a question regarding perceived safety at school. The percentage of students who indicated that they feel safe or very safe at school for seventh grade was 42%. For ninth grade, and it was a, a five point scale. Uh, feel very safe, feel safe, neutral, don't feel safe, or really don't feel safe. Um, okay, so again, the percentage of students who felt safe or very safe at school, seventh grade 42%, ninth grade 50%, 11th grade 40%. Okay, here's um, the percentage of students who felt safe or very safe at school broken out by ethnicity. Uh, for uh, Hispanic students um, in 7th grade, 46% felt safe or very safe at school, 9th grade 50%, and 11th grade 45%. African American students in 7th grade, 38% felt safe or very safe at school, and for 9th and 11th grade, um, we didn't have enough data to, to get um, a percentage. Um, white students, 7th grade 43%, 9th grade 48%, 11th grade 39%. Question, survey question. I am happy to be at this school. Percentage of students responding very much true or pretty much true? 7th grade 44%, 9th grade 48%, 11th grade 45%. So less than half of students in 7th, 9th, and 11th grades indicated that they are happy or very happy to be at school. Uh, this is an area of deep concern for the district. Okay, the district has the following program in place uh, to improve school climate, capturing kids' hearts. As a result of our most recent California Healthy Kids survey data, SKUSD has implemented the Capturing Kids' Hearts program district-wide Teachers and administrators have learned strategies to build more meaningful engagement with students, including a series of activities to launch the school year. This research-based program is helping us to improve our school climate and helping students to feel safer and more connected to their schools. Yes? Um, could I just uh, bring something up about the data, especially for the Do high schoolers? Yeah. Um, I had gone through this when I first started. I went through the um, California Healthy Kids. and. For the high schoolers, I can't speak for the seventh grade, but the high schoolers, a lot of them had answered in the column that said they didn't care or they had no opinion. And so in doing that really skews all the results because I think some of them just kind of just went down the way. So um, you, we, we had a great number of kids who either said they didn't care or they didn't feel one way or the other. So on these kind of uh, data for these kind, it really skews it because you, if you have you know, a number of students doing that, you don't get the real feel. This year we're going to try to be more purposeful and like front load the kids about how important this is so hopefully we can get some truer data. Because um, I didn't feel that this was really representative of the school and also our sample sizes were really low. So we're going to try to get that up for this year as well. Final uh, priority for which we have our local indicators is priority seven, which is access to a broad course of study. For grades one through six, all students have access to common core curriculum for math and ELA, as well as supplemental materials to support the curriculum, including a reading intervention program. Students are enrolled in social studies classes that follow the California history social science framework. All students study science and the district is in the process of implementing the NGSS standards. Individual teachers address the visual and performing arts standards within their own classrooms. Individual teachers address the health standards within their own classrooms. Students in grades K through five have 80 minutes of PE instruction per week, as well as PE opportunities as determined by their classroom teacher. There are no differences across school sites or student groups. Students with disabilities are engaged in the same curriculum as the general education students. For grades seven through 12, at SKUSD students in grades seven through 12 may attend Tropico Middle School, Roseman High Early College Campus, Rare Earth Continuation High School for grades nine through 12, and Abraham Lincoln Independent Study for grades seven through 12. Students at RHS have access to a full course of study including nine CTE pathways, Students at TMS have access to a full course of study, including three full-time PE coaches, Spanish, art, and band. 
Students with disabilities take the same curriculum as the general education students. Students at Rare Earth have access to a full course of study by taking classes at RHS. Abraham Lincoln students take a full range of courses in the core curriculum, ELA, Math, Science, and Social Studies. Abraham Lincoln and Rare Earth students can take lab science classes at RHS. They can also take classes in visual arts and PE. Rare Earth and Abraham Lincoln students can take electives online or at RHS. Okay. Um, finally, um, for Priority 7, access to a broad course of study. There are no barriers preventing SKUSD from providing access to a broad course of study to a student. For students at Abraham Lincoln and Rare Earth, we have adopted a CELUS digital courseware. CELUS offers a wide variety of elective courses that were not offered to ALIS and Rare Earth students previously. These elective courses include foreign language, STEM classes including coding, CTE classes, and fine arts. So I will be um, posting this uh, to the dashboard. It was November the 1st. I think I just got an email saying it, it was due November the 1st. I believe I just got an email saying it was due like the middle of November. But by the beginning of November, I will uh, post this uh, to the California School Dashboard. Are there any questions or comments? Thank you. Adopting new uh, board of trustees organizational meeting dates uh, for December the 11th, Friday, uh, instead of December 13th. Oh, we went from December 11th to December 13th. And please can you give us an explanation of why? Yes, sir. Um, Assembly Bill 2449, which uh, was uh, enacted in 2018, moved the date on which terms for newly elected school and college district trustees begin from the first to the second Friday in December. So that makes the second Friday in December, December 13th. Now, there is a window for the um, organizational meeting of December 13 through December 28, but most of that time is holiday break. However, what, what also uh, became a factor is that by December 15, we have to approve the first interim, I believe. And so it's, we felt it was just better to do both on December 13th. The 13th was the earliest we could do the organizational meeting, but the getting close to the deadline for the uh, first interim uh, board approval. So that's why, um, and unfortunately, uh, Mr. President, we were told at the superintendent's meeting that if we had an a problem uh, coming up with a date that the Ker Kern County would help us find the date. So when you do the math, it just looks like December 13 is the only date possible that we can do both. And that's they, they need an extra week to count their chats. I guess so. <laughs> no hanging chats. Uh, recount votes in case just somebody made a mistake. Yeah. I mean, you had a whole month to take care of this. We're not Florida. Huh? We're not Florida. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, this is the craziest boring California. That's okay. It's all through the
groups and methods. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to change our date from 11 to 13? To make a motion that we adopt the new date from uh, December 11th to uh, Friday, December the 13th, 2018. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 For I, for nay. <laughs> Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. He doesn't want the Friday the 13th because he thinks it's a bad update. It is no, not a bad update. Actually, I, I like Friday the 13th. It's just, I think it's. Never mind. I understand. It's, it's not a bad update. It's superstition. I had a sister not. born on Friday the 13th. It's a horrible thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you do think that, but. Uh, my daughter was born on Friday the 13th, but it's not a bad thing. I just think some of the rules that are made at the Capitol are not very smart. Let, let me put it that way. Uh, the approved final uh, studio contract agreement of employment, uh, October 3rd uh, through uh, June 30th, 2021. This case. Yes, sir. When you um, approved the uh, contract of Mr. Barth uh, at the last board meeting, there was a typo in the number for the second year of his contract. The uh, contract read $115,786. It should have read $115,186. So, um, to Mr. Barr's credit, he wanted to make sure that the board was aware that it's actually less. So, wanted you to re, um, re approve his contract with the correct Approved number. Numbers. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'll entertain the motion. I'll make a motion to approve the final CDO contract for October 3rd, 2019, and June 30th, 2021. <laughs> Second. There's no way we can lower it for you. <laughs> I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve the following list of personnel. Uh, anybody have any questions on personnel? Friday is pink out day because we're going to be pinked out. I'm going to dye my hair everything. Um, <laughs> Our dance is Saturday. Um, homecoming dance is Saturday at 7 p.m. Homecoming game is Friday the 25th at 7 p.m. Powder Puff is Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Go juniors. Go seniors. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you guys know what powder puff football is, right? 
where the girls are all. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the boys are cheerleaders. But and the boys amazing. are cheerleaders. And that's Wednesday. What? Wednesday at five o'clock. Is it? This coming Wednesday. Uh, the twenty third. Twenty third. Yes. Twenty third. What? Is there a warning? Yes. And the boys are like trying to run for queen. Yes. And the girls are running for king. So it's going to be kind of fun. And it's a cheerleader. The boys are cheerleaders. Cheerleaders, it's and they amazing. wear the outfits and everything. So yes. it'll be a fun thing. It used to be the girls got to use pads. They did when I was in high school. We got to wear pads. It was fun. No, now you got to pull each other's flag. Hey, my juniors are ready yeah. for anything, but let's change them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of anything else. I don't have nothing else. But you got expulsions on the Powder Puff, so. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have it recorded for you. Are you Are you going to be a cheerleader? Or? No. I'm going to be too busy with Mrs. DeBeau running around. Okay. So, um, okay. Tennis and volleyball won yesterday. Was that yesterday? Mm -hmm. And tennis is, I mean, volleyball is probably going to go to, to CIF. Oh, CIF. Oh, really? Wow. They're rated oh, second right now in the in They're the second in yeah. league. Mm -hmm. But they still have a chance to win league. Yes. Yeah. Really? yeah. Yeah. They have one more, and if they win, then they first place. So Where's they'll the go to CIF. Yeah. When's the next game? It's um, next week, but it's a week. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? I think it's tomorrow. They play in Desert Park? I think so. It's tomorrow at Desert. Yeah. So they've got to be there at the school at 2.15. So, and then parent-teacher conferences are tomorrow. Friday, Saturday. Sunday's WASC. That's it. That's all I got. So <laughs> it's it's hard not to look at the calendar. <laughs> so I made a motion to adjourn the meeting at <laughs> 09. <laughs> Is that what you get to do every time? Bye. 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 Bye.